Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with a radical equation. We have x minus the square root of 2 over x equals 3. And for those values of x for which the first equation is true, we're supposed to evaluate an expression, which is x minus the square root of 2x. So based on the values we find from the first equation, we're going to find the value of the second expression or equation, whatever you want to call that, right? So where does this problem come from? Well, this problem is from MathCon. What is MathCon? MathCon is a nationwide math competition started in 2008. It's open to all students, grades 4 through 12, and quite a few students participated so far. And that's their website. Go ahead and check it out. Look at the sample problems. And if you're interested or if you know someone who can participate, go ahead and do it because it's a really nice, challenging test. Great, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem and see how we can approach it. We have x minus the square root of 2 over x equals 3. And again, we're supposed to evaluate x minus the square root of 2x. How do we find the values of x from the first equation? Easy. You just solve it, right? You can go ahead and put x and 3 on the same side and then square both sides, right? And that should give you the value of x, but how many values you're going to get from here? Looks like we're going to get an x squared, we're going to get an x, so that's going to be x cubed, a cubic equation with three roots. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot to say something. x is a real number. So do you think this equation is going to have three real solutions? We've got to be very careful because we have a radical. We need to make sure that whatever you find for x, 2 over x must be greater than 0. Can't be 0, it's impossible. Think about why. So, you can definitely go ahead and solve this equation, like I said earlier, x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then this will become 2 over x. If you cross multiply, you get x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x equals 2, and you can just subtract it to set everything equal to 0. This kind of looks like x minus 3 squared or x minus 2 squared, but this 9x is kind of messing up with that equation. But that's no big deal. We can still solve it. This is cubic, so you can try to depress the cubic first if you want. You don't have to, but that's one way to do it. You can just replace x with y plus 2. That'll get rid of the radical term. In other words, I mean the quadratic term, which means you're not going to have a y squared in the equation. Only y cubed, y, and a constant term. And then that will be fairly easy to solve using some identity, right? What does that kind of look like? Let's go ahead and find out. Replace x with y plus 2. And then you're going to get something like this. By the way, here's the million dollar question. What if we find three real values? Which one are we going to use? Or does it matter which one we use? So those are really good questions. Think about it. But if you go on and expand it, I usually expand it like this, y cubed plus 8. And then I do the 3ab, which is 6y multiplied by y plus 2. That's how I memorized it, sort of. This is y squared plus 4y plus 4. And then this is 9y plus 18. And then I have a minus 2 equals 0. Okay, let's go ahead and put it all together. And notice that 6y squared is going to cancel out. Like I said earlier, you're not going to have y squared in this equation. You're going to have y cubed and y. So, and you're like, why? <laughs> it's 12y. And then you have the negative 24. So 12 minus 24 is negative 12. But then there is another one, uh, which is going to give you negative 3y at the end. Make sense? And then we're going to look at the constants. For example, you have an 8, we have a negative 24, and an 18, and a 2. This makes a 16, and plus 8 is 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a good solution. Nice. Okay, this is a really, really depressed cubic, which is good, because now we can go ahead and take out y, and write this as y squared minus 3 equals 0. And from here, you get y equals 0, y equals root 3, and y equals negative 3. Probably one of the best cases that you can ever, ever get. Uh, and from here, where do we go? What is y? x is y plus 2. So you can just add 2 to each one of these, right? x should be 2, x should be 2 plus root 3, and then x should be 2 minus root 3. All of these are positive, so they seem to satisfy the radical. But again, because we square both sides, we need to go back and check every single solution to make sure that it satisfies the original problem. And that's kind of cumbersome, sorry about that, 
but you know, uh, you could probably do approach it a little differently. But for example, if x is equal to two, plug it in real quick, super duper quick, because that's easy. That's gonna be two minus the square root of one, which is obviously not three. Where does this come from though? Like I said earlier, this is kind of like this, but that's not true because if you square them, then it'll be true. Make sense? That's why squaring brings in extra solutions, or should I say extraneous solutions, okay? That's why we need to check at the end. And then you can just plug in two plus root three, and then you can test two minus root three. It's not too hard because the thing is, you're gonna use, for example, for two minus root three, it's gonna look like this. Yes, it's kind of ugly, but the thing is you can multiply by the conjugate, the radicals, like two plus root three, this becomes four minus three, which is one, forget about it. And inside the radical, you get something like two minus root three minus the square root of four plus two root three. Now, I want you to think about this expression. I'm gonna leave it at that. There's a good reason why I do that because at the end, I'm gonna show you something. So hopefully you can compare that to this one and then we can hopefully talk about it. Or maybe it'll be an open-ended question, who knows? Okay, now here's the fun part. And again, thank you MathCon for this beautiful problem and keep them coming. So we have x minus the square root of two over x equals three, and we're supposed to evaluate from here, x minus the square root of two x. Okay, the first method is really cumbersome because we have to solve a cubic. Isn't there another way to do it? Okay, let's find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. Why don't we just separate these radicals because we can do so, right? And then make a common denominator. That's gonna give me x root x minus root two divided by root x is equal to three. And then multiply both sides by the square root of x. We know that x cannot be zero, right? Hopefully. And then we get something like this. This is the super duper critical part because I'm gonna do a little bit of hocus pocus if you allow me, or maybe a little bit of mathematics, right? So I'm gonna split up the three root x because I don't like the three. I mean, not that I have anything against it, but just as a number, it's better if you write it as two plus one. You see what I'm talking about? And then we're gonna do a little uh, switch here. We're gonna be putting, by the way, I probably messed, oops, yes. That's supposed to be a square root of two, not square root of x. And now we're gonna go ahead and put uh, these two together and you'll see why in a little bit, there's a good reason behind that. But if you do these kinds of problems all the time, you're gonna start seeing things like I see solutions, right? And then I can go ahead and factor out a square root of x. And if still, if it's still not clear, I'm gonna tell you to look at difference of two squares. Think of this as square root of x squared minus root two squared. So this can be factored into root x plus root two times root x minus root two. Uh-oh, we have the same thing on the right-hand side. Can we just cancel out though? Isn't that gonna be a problem? No, because if x is real, this is not gonna be zero. Boom, it's gone. And now we end up with one here and we get square root of x times square root of x minus the square root of two is equal to one. If you distribute, you get x minus two times square root of two x equals one. What are we looking for? Uh-oh, we're looking for exactly that. So the answer is one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. By the way, I forgot to, almost forgot to show you Wolfram Alpha's result and ta-da-da-da, how did Wolfram Alpha come up with something like this? Why didn't they get the same answer? And until next time, bye-bye.